Yeah, hey, Frank, uh, how excited were you to get the call today from the Atlanta Falcons? Oh, I was super excited, you know. I can't even explain, like, the like emotion that was going through my body at the time. It was just like I was on the phone. They tell me, like, you want to be a Falcon? I'm like, yeah, I want to be a Falcon. Y'all see, I got the red on. Like, you know, <laughs> like, it was just something, you know. So, you know, it was just like, it was just, I was just excited, you know. I've been waiting all day, you know, just trying to sit here. You know, you hear from so many teams. My phone call rang one time before, and it wasn't even a land. It was just a person just talking to me. I was just like, no, not now. Lesson, you know. <laughs> so I hung up on them, and then y'all called. And then they, they let it call. I said, yes, y'all been waiting all day. Yo. I'm like, thank you. But, yeah, that's the emotions I was going through. <laughs> okay. I okay. appreciate it. Hey, uh, you know, uh, after Nikhil and, and Brandon, you're the third one coming out of uh, ASU. Uh, you know, uh, how do you hope to, you know, continue to play and the, uh, you know, make it in the league? You know, and that's one thing. You know, me coming behind them, like I felt like my last year I couldn't show how much better I had gotten from 2019 season. So me coming out of land now, I just feel like. I feel like I probably was the best still ever. This, you know, I feel like I was the best still ever this draft because I got so much better. You know, I learned from the kills, learned from IU, and you see what IU doing. And I just came here. So, me, I'm just going out there just to show them that I can play. You know, I can play right away if y'all let me. I can play special teams. I can do everything, you know? And I'm just excited. Jeff Schultz? Yeah, I mean, just following that up, you, you, you seem also genuinely surprised. I mean, were you not really sure what scouts thought of you, whether you would get drafted or not, or were you not sure whether you, where you would go? Where were your thoughts going into the draft? My thoughts, my, well, my agent was telling me, you know, he was just saying, like, it's a possible chance you could get drafted, you know? And I was just like, okay. And when he said possibly, I was just thinking, like, you know, everything happens. Every, a lot of things happen. Names change, you know, anything happened in the draft. So I was just looking, you know, at first I really was just looking for, like, even, like, later, like, six or, like, you know, like, seven. And, or, like, probably because one coach told me it was, like, you probably go undrafted, you know, and I ain't just let that stuff like that get me down or nothing. So I just like, all right, you know, it's just gonna help me. Now they're just gonna bring like a demon out of me to come out there and compete, you know. So, but it was just surprising. Like I'm like 184. Oh, 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 oh. I was looking like maybe like the 200s, you know, maybe you know, just because I ain't get the opportunity to show so much. But it, like 184, you know, just you ain't able to go like around early. There's some cats, some guys that's out there still waiting to be cool. You know, it was amazing for me. Michael Rothstein. Hey, Frank, congratulations. Uh, where do you feel like your strength is as a receiver? One day I would say going vertical. But one day I would say like first time, like I'm a, I feel like my strongest strength is going vertical. I feel like I could change like the tempo of the game. Like, you know, I go out there and make a big play, you know, and that's one thing. Then also just me, my toughness too, and my energy, you know. I go out there with energy all day. I could, I could have this high energy for four quarters and not every play could have that. Some people be tired after the first half, and I got that all, you know, all four quarters. So I feel like another show is my energy. And the people around me, that's the, that's on my team, they're going to feel they gonna feel off it, too. They're going to eat off my energy, too. So I felt like I'm also, like, a good person to be around, especially a team player, you know. When people getting out the whack, I'm on the sideline pushing everybody, getting everybody going. So that's another, like, major strength I have because I see, you know, being on a lot of teams, I'm giving them energy. They start doing a lot of great things. So... I'm looking forward to coming out there with his energy and show. I know it's going to be other cats there that already did a lot of things and everything, but I'm just hoping they just come and let me just, just talk a little bit, do a little bit of energy after I get everything down pat. <laughs> so, all right. So you've said energy about 30 times there in the last like five seconds. Like where does this energy come from? You know, it's just, it's just, it, it comes, I just feel like it's just me, you know, it's just me, you know, why wouldn't I be this happy and always having this energy if I just made it out of Jersey City, New Jersey, if y'all know what Jersey City, New Jersey is, it's crazy. You know, everybody don't get this opportunity and everybody don't even really get the opportunity to go to college out of Jersey City. So, I mean, like, why would not be happy and always positive with this energy if I'm doing better than most of the people I grew up with out of the city? You know? Appreciate it, Frank. Thanks. Congratulations, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Charles Odom. Hey, congratulations, man. Um, you mentioned the concern about um, because you didn't get the opportunity to show too much. Can you talk a little more about that? I know you had limited opportunities due to the, the schedule. So the rib energy, rib uh, injury held you back. Yeah, excuse me. I'm sorry. 
Um, yeah, you, can you just talk about the things that helped that that get, that uh, limited the opportunity to show too much? You you referred to that, and can you talk about you know what that what that was like? You know, in this past season, having the rib problem and then not having too many games to play anyway. Okay. Well, um, I would just say like it was stressful for me. You know, it was really stressful for me because when we was when we were first was training during the off season. I took that all season like one of my best all season ever because I knew the expectation that was needed for me of becoming a, a go-to guy, you know, and that's what Coach Hearn was always preaching on me. So I was working hard each and every day, you know, each and every, like putting in the extra hours, like um, showing my teammates how to do certain things because they was young and I needed them to help me to be great. So, and when I go out, then we have our first game and I go out there and I hurt my ribs. Oh my, like, it was just like, a lot of stuff was just going through my mind at the time. It was just like, wow, like, and that was one thing, like, how I got over it, you know, like, I, like how I do adversity, you know. I, would ju I just got hurt, and I, I'm supposed to have the best season of my life, and, you know, and I can't play no more. I can't go back to the game. So it was it was really hurtful for me, but me being a leader at that time and the captain of the team, I couldn't go to the sideline and pout because I can't go back in the game, you know, because my, my rib hurt. I was still on that sideline pushing the younger cats to go out there and do better, you know, telling them, like, it's next man up. Like, this is how we got to be. I can't go in there right now. But I need I need y'all to be great. So on that sideline, when I got hurt, it was just I'm on the sideline talking to Jaden. I'm on the sideline talking to young cats. Go out there. I see this. He ain't gonna beat you. He ain't gonna beat you this. But you do this on that. So just me being that guy all the time, you know. And like I said, like I'm just happy that you know I I got to this point, you know, because I did get hurt. You know, I did get hurt. And then we only had like well, I only played like two more games after that. And it was just like, dang, did I even like do enough? You know, it was just a lot of stuff I was just worried about. Going into this process, you know, but I took my time. You know, I talked to a lot of people that helped me and, and support me. And I went out there, and, you know, and I, I just wish my mom was here to this day right now. You know, she'll be jumping and screaming right now. But it's all right. I know she's watching down. <laughs> and and how long did it take you to get to get past that injury? So it's actually like, you know, it actually worked out for me because after that game, ASU ended up having an outbreak of COVID. So we had to sit out for two weeks. And so we all in the house quarantining. And then by the time I, we got out of quarantine, I was back to practice full speed, you know, ready to play. Awesome. Kelsey Conway? I can't hear you, Kels. Yeah, you're muted, Kelsey. Uh, I Can got you hear you. me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you talk about all this energy that you have, um, but where does your source of motivation come from when you're playing the game of football? That's another thing also, just like my city, you know, like I'm, it's my motivation, especially for my mom, my mom and my little girl. You know, it's just like, especially with my little girl, you know, I worked this hard so she won't have to grow up in Jersey City like I did, you know, and I can make her life better. And also my mom, you know, in this process, I lost my mother about a month ago, you know, when I was training before my pro day. And I felt like her energy, just, it came it more into me. Like, she gave me something, like, just keep going for me, baby. You know, and that's why I feel that's still my motivation, you know, each and every day to this day right now. Like, I got to keep going for my mother because I know this is what she wants for me. And it's nothing else out there for me, you know. It's, it's all about football. So, and then, and then my city, you know, I'm showing that. I'm showing the younger cats. You don't have to go to the streets. Let's lock it in, you know, train, get better, go to the football fields and just keep working on your craft. And maybe you maybe you get the opportunity to go to college and go to school, you know, and go out there and do big things. And I'm just showing them that you, that you can if you just stay focused, work hard and it's all going to pay off. Thanks. Thank you. Do we have any follow ups for Frank? Yeah, yeah, actually, sure. I, yeah I exactly. Oh, we'll do d -Led first and then Michael. Yeah, Frank, uh, sorry to hear about your mom passing, uh, but, you know, how, how tough was that? And uh, what did she pass up and uh, how are you trying to deal with that now? It was really tough for me, you know, when, you, when you're when doing a lot of things and you're doing everything for her, it's like, wow, like, I'm, I've been doing, I've been working this hard for you to help you, mom, you know? And when it happened, it was just like, what I'm doing it for, you know? And that was like the big toe I had to get over, you know? It was tough for me because I was just like, what I'm doing this for? And cause it was all about her. Like, I'm going to do this and she's not here with me. It was like no motive, no happiness or nothing. But when I just got, that's like my inner self all the time just telling me like, you can't stop here. You want to live back in Jersey City? You want to keep, you want to go back and do the things your friend's doing? And it's like, nah. So that's why I just, it pushed me each and every day. But how I got over it, it was just one day at a time. And I feel like that's how it had to be for me. Just one day at a time, 
I went back down to House of Athletes, got around positive energy, the guys I was training with for my pro day. And they just, they, they, they lift me up each and every day. I come in there, they don't, they don't talk about my mom. They just say, like, let's work. It's time to work. It's time to get better because, like I was saying before, like, my energy affect a lot of people. They were just saying, like, we need your energy, Frank, so we can get better today. So, mm-hmm. like, and that's how I was able, like, to get over it. You know, I'm still taking, you know, it's still slowly, but it's okay. You know, I just know I, I got here. This was one point. I got to keep going for her. And that's why I'm saying, like, I felt like when she left, she left her energy, more energy for me, you know, to go out there and keep being great. And what was her name? I'm sorry. My mother's name was Ladorn Gurley. Could you spell that for me? Capital L A. Capital mm-hmm. D. No, not the, the capital L, lowercase A, capital D. D O R N E. N E. Okay. And Gurley, G U. G U R L E Y. L E Y. Okay, like Todd. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Frank. Appreciate it. Thank you. Michael? Uh, I kind of want to follow on that. What was what was your relationship like with your mom? We was we was tight. We was tight. We was really tight, you know. And I just said we was tight on like as if like when I when I got to college, you know. That's why I would say like we got really tight when I got to college because it was like now that she don't see me in the house no more, you know. And it was I felt like it was different for us. So like we would talk all the time. And, you know, and communicate, you know, about everything, you know, about everything. That's how close we started getting. You know, at first it was like I was just young and she was working every day. She was a single mom that had to go out five in the morning. And I'm and I'm and I'm already going to school. When I come home, she come home from work straight to sleep. So at that time, when I was like in high school, we really couldn't communicate that much. Or I couldn't really talk to her about football. But every morning she would call me when I'm in class because she ended up picking the Jersey Jordan up and read about me. And she's like, oh, wow, baby. Like, I didn't even know you was in the paper. Wait, wait. I said, Ma, you, was, you left. So I just know when she seen the paper in the morning, she always called me and, and told me how, like, like proud of she was of me and how excited that I'm actually doing everything that my other brother's not doing right now. What did she do? What you said, you know, what did she do for a living? And, and also, I, I think d asked it, but you didn't answer. What, how did she pass away? Uh, um, my mother was a home health aide lady for 18 years. And um, she passed away from a heart attack. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. Oh, no, it's okay, man. It's all right. 